Uh, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover Library Commission activities and any Nebraska library topics that may be of interest to um, librarians in the state. We have Commission staff that do presentations and we also bring in guest speakers like we have today. We do these sessions every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. They're free, about an hour depending. Um, and we have a mixture of things that we'll offer during these sessions, presentations, interviews, web tours, mini training sessions, whatever we can get. Um, and they are recorded, so if you're unable to listen to our live sessions, all of the recordings are available on our website as well. This morning we have uh, Troy Gagner, I didn't even ask him. Yes. Okay. <laughs> From the USDA who's going to talk about some great funding opportunities for libraries that you guys really should be jumping on ASAP. <laughs> so I'm going to pass things over to Troy. Yeah, probably don't need the keyboard. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Krista said, my name is Troy Gagner. I'm with uh, USDA Rural Development uh, in the Community Programs area. And uh, what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this morning is a special initiative that uh, we have available uh, through stimulus funding, actually, uh, for library funding. Uh, but before I get into that, I'm going to talk with you just a little bit about uh, the programs that, that we do have and where this funding has come from and kind of give you an overview of, of uh, generally what our funds do and, and how the library initiative fits in. There we go. You can shrink up that if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. And you can see There we go. Uh, the uh, programs that, that uh, we work with in our, our community programs division, uh, we one is community facilities, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today. Uh, the other is uh, water and wastewater projects or water environmental programs, which um, I'm not going to spend any time on. I don't think that the Library Commission and the, our uh, libraries around the state are going to be terribly interested in, in uh, septic systems and uh, wastewater not. systems. So we're going, to, we're going to focus on our community facilities programs, and, and that's really where the library initiative fits in. Uh, these programs that, that we provide are loan and grant programs. Uh, what we do with, with potential projects is, is look at them and, and uh, try to determine how to best finance a project. And in some cases, that does mean providing some grant financing. And in many cases, that means uh, we are able to provide low interest loans to a, a community or a nonprofit, um, uh, depending on the, the particular project and the applicant, uh, to assist them in getting a project going. Um, as you see what, uh, on the slide, these are what are determined to be essential community facilities, and I'm going to show you a list in a minute, kind of give you an overview of, of what all those might be. Uh, and they are limited to communities up to 20,000 in, in population. The one that's used there at the bottom for Chinese class, I need to share so you can see. There we go. Uh, to start off, I'll tell you a little bit about what we did just in the last year with our uh, community facilities programs. Um, our fiscal year 2009 uh, was actually one of the, the, the biggest year we've had, and, and really a lot of that has to do with, with stimulus funding. Uh, we, we had uh, uh, quite a bit of extra money that we were able to use in order to complete projects in the state of Nebraska uh, with the stimulus funds, and as you probably are all aware, stimulus funds are, are not something that, that are going to be ongoing. They're, they will end at the end of this, this fiscal year. But as you see, we did $56 million in projects in, in the state of Nebraska last year. Um, unfortunately, we did not have any libraries last year. Um, and I'll show you towards the end of the presentation that uh, some of the libraries that we have done in the past, uh, but last year uh, we, we did not. Now that $56 million is probably twice as much as what we typically do in, a, in a, any fiscal year. Um, and as you see with the, uh, the five hospitals that are listed first, um, we've, we've got a couple of complete rebuilds, um, some other maintenance projects, and then a, a big hospital addition. And that, that probably is where the bulk of the funding went. But, as you see, as you go down the list, um, we've got, we did a number of other projects, including uh, some emergency warning sirens and, and ambulances. And, and some of those were, were smaller projects where the community was able to come up with the, the bulk of the funds and we were able to help out uh, in order to get the, the project completed. Um, again, here's a, <clears throat> just kind of a laundry list of the, the kinds of things that we can, we can fund with community facilities. Again, 
health services is is one of the big pushes uh, that we have, and it, and it always has been, and it will continue to be to provide um, access to health care services in, in rural areas. And so hospitals, assisted living, uh, dental clinics, uh, you name it, are, are available there. Uh, public safety is really the other big ongoing push, and we, we work a lot with communities uh, developing new fire halls, helping them purchase uh, trucks and equipment, um, even uh, patrol cars for sheriff's offices and, and um, small communities uh, that, that do have their own uh, police forces. Uh, we do some utility work through community facilities, but that is, for the most part, limited to telemedicine, distant learning our distance learning types of, of instances, and there are some natural gas projects, but, but uh, we, we don't get terribly involved in those. Uh, public buildings and improvements, and you know, libraries may actually kind of fit in, in this section as well, uh, but this kind of runs the, the gamut from county courthouses and city halls, we, we do child care centers, um, adult daycare centers, uh, a lot of community centers around, around the uh, state with community kitchens in many cases. Um, uh, fairgrounds, and last year we did actually, I believe, our very first animal shelter in, in the state of Nebraska. Uh, transportation improvements are something else that we do, uh, streetscapes, um, sidewalks, soft street parking. Uh, we are The ones you see listed at the bottom we are able to do, but to my knowledge, I don't think we've ever done an airport in, in the state of <laughs> Nebraska, but it's, it's something that we could do if somebody came to us with that. Um, the final area is cultural and education, and I think this is probably the area you, you all would be most interested in. And besides working with or being able to work with schools, both public and private, college campuses, uh, vocational schools, um, see down at the bottom, we can, we can work with community theaters, museums, and, and of course libraries uh, as a, an eligible purpose. Now this is the, the, the actual program that I'm going to spend a little bit more time talking with you about. Uh, and it's very recently the Secretary of Agriculture designated $100 million in our financing uh, to fund public libraries. Um, and he wants to get that $100 million out the door this fiscal year. Uh, so it, it's really a short turnaround time to, to get these library projects up and going. Um, and that $100 million will be coming through the, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. Many people refer to it as the stimulus. Uh, in our circles, we refer to it as ARA uh, for short, um, or ERA, depending on which agency you talk to. <laughs> I, I've, heard it, I've heard both. Uh, but that, those funds will be coming uh, through that. And really what that means is that the stimulus funding will run out at the end of, of fiscal year 2010, uh, which is a federal fiscal, fiscal year. So that gives us until the end of September to really get funds for these projects obligated. And so um, as you kind of start to count the months between now and September, that, that does not give uh, us or the libraries that we, we potentially could be working with a lot of time. And so we'll be trying to work through these projects as, as quickly as we can. And, and uh, as we talk a little bit more, I kind of tell you a little bit more about uh, how that is going to be available and, and why it might be important to uh, if you've got a, a potential project to, to talk with us now and get, get the ball rolling because uh, those funds just may not be there in, in, in the future. Mm -hmm. Our goal, um, and this was actually a goal that the Secretary gave to every state, is, is he would like to see $2.2 million in library projects um, in this fiscal year. Uh, that's across the state of Nebraska. Um, as much as $500,000 of that $2.2 million um, can be available through grants. Uh, now that doesn't mean that uh, we'll do one big project with a $500,000 grant. Uh, what we would like to see is, is multiple projects in, in multiple communities, and uh, hopefully we can we can get that those grant funds and, and kind of share it across the state, and, and and maybe get some grant funds in in every project that we do. Um, I know that's terribly important to libraries because uh, revenue streams for libraries to repay loans is 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 something that's that uh, is difficult to come up with. Uh, eligible organizations that can apply for, for the funding are public bodies, of course. Uh, if it's public public library, if it's city-owned, county-owned, or if, if there's some sort of a district that, that actually owns the library, those are eligible applicants. Um, Not-for-profit corporations um, can also apply for these funds. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about those ties to the local community in, in a minute. And then also federally, federally recognized Indian tribes are uh, eligible applicants. Um, one of the things that I, that I would like to mention is that, that uh, 
when it when it comes to putting the financing together, the difference between applying as a public body or not not for profit when it comes to libraries uh, can be kind of significant. Um, public bodies in most cases are going to have to bond for the financing, and uh, in in a lot of cases that may mean uh, going to a vote. And of course that. A lot of times, especially in, in difficult financial times, that, that may be hard to get past. Um, the other issue is that the, the cost of bonding uh, can, can be prohibitive on, on smaller projects. Um, and just the time that it takes to kind of go through that process slows it down. Not-for-profits, we, we don't have that issue with. Though we can actually do loans directly to the not-for-profits. And, and what we've seen in... in um, Many cases in, in the past when we've done libraries is, is there's a uh, library foundation that is connected to the library, or maybe there's a, another foundation in the community that um, has ties to the community that, that does uh, a kind of a range of projects but would be willing to work with the library to do this. Um, and so that may be something that as you look at your project, if, if it's a city-owned library or a county-owned library, um, if there is a library foundation that's connected, it may be worth looking into using the, the uh, foundation as, as the applicant just to, to speed the process and, and really to make it easier on you as the applicant, I think, to, to avoid some of the issues that you come, you come up against when, when you actually have to bond for some of these funds. Uh, to get back to those significant ties to the community, and, and this applies more, of course, to a, a nonprofit than it would to a public body. It's, it's hard to argue that a public body does not have significant ties to its own community. Uh, but again, that's a broadly based board with significant ties to the community and represents the community. Uh, what we don't want to see is a, is a board that uh, has membership, and, and that membership is really from, from outside that particular community. Um, we will take a look at those those documents and make sure that you know it's it's a representative body. Um, and another way to look at that is is to look at if the, that nonprofit is controlled or, or has support by the local public body. In a lot of cases, and I'm not sure with library foundations how that works. If if uh, the library board and the library foundation board end up being the, the same group, which is fine. Uh, we find that a lot with, with hospital districts and hospital foundations where we, we have kind of a crossover uh, membership of those boards, um, and, and that's just fine uh, in, in a lot and of cases. They vary from library to library. Sure. Yeah, every and, and we can work with just about any, any group. We just have to make sure that, um, you know, and in most cases, I think with a library, I don't think we're going to run into too many issues where we've got membership from outside the community. Um, but again, if, it, if it's a... Uh, a uh, Nonprofit that, that actually owns and runs the library, if, but it does get some public funding through through some taxes or through the city itself, um, that also is considered a significant tie uh, to the community. Or just fundraising efforts. If they, they've shown that they've been able to, to uh, raise X number of dollars from the local community over you know, the past period of time, that, that again is just another uh, instance where we can point to uh, local support. Uh, the, the borrower has to have, uh, will, will have to be responsible for the operation, the maintenance, and, and the management of the facility. Um, in a public body that, that owns its, its library, that's, that's pretty easy to show. Um, in many cases, if, if we are using the, the uh, library foundation uh, as an applicant to, to get the funds, uh, what may have to happen is that the, the foundation would actually have to own the assets. And what can happen then is, is uh, because a lot of times the foundation may not necessarily want to keep control of those assets, but what we will do is is uh, work with you to set it up so the the foundation would apply for the funds. They would technically own the assets, but they could lease it back to the public body in some cases for a dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when if if it's a loan and grant combination, especially then. Uh, you could write a, a loan agreement so then when the, the loan is repaid, those assets are automatically transferred back to the public body. Um, it's, it's really kind of a, a, almost an, an end around to, to get financing to, to the foundation uh, to make the whole application process easier for everyone. Again, because it, it, it helps us avoid coming up against that, that bonding question. And in many cases, when it comes to applying or to uh, trying to get some grant funds into a project, um, a community, a public body, when, when we look at um, their financials, uh, it may be harder for us to demonstrate that they need the grant funding. 
uh, library foundation, it's, it's a lot easier to make a strong case to say that, yeah, we do need some grant, grant funding in, in, in this uh, project. And so, again, that's, that's kind of a way that, that we can uh, work around and, and use the library foundation or, or maybe a different foundation uh, to act as an applicant and uh, get, get funds into the library that way. Um, and again, at, at the bottom bullet there, applicants must be financially sound and able to organize and manage the facility. Uh, what we try to avoid is, is uh, some brand new startup uh, organization that, that uh, has, has no real history or involvement with the library that is going to be the applicant. It's, it's, tough, to, it's tough for us to, to demonstrate that that, that is a, a applicant that we're confident will be able to uh, carry this project or, uh, on after after the funding is provided. Now for the, the library initiative for eligible use of funds, um, uh, pretty typical of, of most, I, I, I think, uh, projects that you might be looking at. Of course, we can in instruct, uh, construct, or improve the library in any way. That could be remodeling. That could be um, an addition. It could be a brand new library, replacement library. Um, and that can include cost to acquire land for a new library site if, if a library is landlocked and, and it looks like it, the easiest way may just be able to move it to a different location. Uh, funds can be provided to pay the professional fees involved with that, your architect, your engineer, um, legal fees, all of, all of those, anything you can think of that, that comes along with uh, constructing a new building or, or renovating a building. Uh, we can help with uh, purchasing equipment uh, required for the operation, and that's uh, really all of your furnitures and fixtures inside, including the shelving. Um, computers and audiovisual equipment, I think, was probably probably a, a, a big one here uh, that we, we can help out with, and any sort of distance learning equipment as well. And uh, we have been told that uh, bookmobiles will also be eligible for these funds, so if, if that's something that, that you're that interested in. Well, with, with the stimulus funds, they, over the past year, um, kind of outside of the library initiative, we, we had been asked not to fund too many vehicles. Uh -huh. uh, and I think the issue is, the, with the stimulus funds, the, the big push has been projects that create jobs. And I think that they were, they're, what they were thinking there was that it's tough for them to argue that they're creating jobs by providing a, a truck to the sanitary sewer system or something there. Um, bookmobiles are, are kind of a different animal mm -hmm. here and so that's it's you know because really a bookmobile is a, it is a library or it, it just happens to be a to vehicle as well. To some um, towns and small cities, small towns, villages that is their library when it shows up. Sure. Yeah. And when uh, we first, our national office first started discussing the library initiative, uh, bookmobiles wasn't um, necessarily listed as an el eligible use but I think they a lot of questions from the state saying is this something we can do because of because of the the prohibition of, of purchasing vehicles with earlier stimulus funds and I think once they thought it through they thought yeah bookmobiles definitely would be something that we could we could look at the rates and terms on on uh, loans for these projects and and uh, again I should probably take a step back and say it's um, the funding that's available isn't, isn't all grant funding, of course. We, uh, a, the, a big portion of it is, is going to be loan funds. And, um, but what's nice about our, our terms for these loans is we can go up to 40 years uh, on a loan, which is uh, much longer than you'd be able to find um, in, in the, the open market or really through bonding. In, in a lot of cases, it's tough to get a 40-year bond term. And what that does is that really helps bring that annual cost down. Um, now the repayment period is actually limited to the useful life of the facility. So we, uh, the 40 years would apply if we were constructing a library, most likely renovating or doing an addition to a library. If we're just buying computers it w and, and we were talking about loan funds, we wouldn't be able to do 40 years. No. <laughs> uh, you know, because th those things are, are uh, pretty much need to be replaced by the time you, you bring them home. So, uh, but we can, we can, uh, probably stretch that out a little bit longer than most of you would be able to get uh, a loan from your, your bank for as well. Um, our current interest, interest rates right now are at 4%, and uh, our rates change on a quarterly basis, so the, the rate is 4% through the end of March of this year. Um, I can't see come April the, the rates going up astronomically. They may even come down uh, a slight bit again. It's, it's tough to say. 
uh, but I would I would estimate that they would probably stay somewhere near that that four percent. And uh, and what's nice about that that low interest rate is if you are interested in in doing a a large project um, but aren't so sure about borrowing money to do it, if if you've got a some sort of capital campaign going on. Uh, what you might be able to do with, with a loan from us is as you continue to, to collect those contributions for your capital campaign, you can actually borrow the money from rural development, get your project going, get it built, continue to collect those contributions, make your loan payments, pay it off early if you want to. Um, there is no penalty for, for paying a loan off early. So you could take out a 40-year term loan on a, on a new uh, library and you could continue to do your fundraising in the community and pay it off in three years and we're we're happy with that if, if we'd love to see that happen because uh, what we want to do is we want to provide you to find the financing to uh, to get the project done um, it's not going to hurt our feelings if you come in and, and, and pay us off early um, now the, the funds that we provide can be used in, in combination um, loans and grants from us and with this library initiative um, I think our goal is going to be trying to get as much grant funds into every project as we can get, um, unless we've got a community that just is not eligible for grant funds for some reason. Um, other contributions uh, can be matched with that. So if, if you have been doing a capital campaign or doing some fundraising and you've got some money that you want to put in, that, that's fine as well. Uh, loans and grants from other sources, whether they be state, federal agencies, uh, we're more than happy to, to match those funds as well. Um, you know, any sort of a, a donation from a from a, a large donor as well that's certainly something that we can do we don't need to come in and finance the whole project what we want to do is come in and finance the the part of the project that you can't get financed elsewhere so if you've got got a project idea and you, you've got things started uh, but just aren't quite there we can come in and, and help with that last bit and you can continue to raise your funds pay us off and and uh, take care of the project funding that way now, for, on the, the grant side, again, um, it's, it's hard to, to tell you just what's going to be available in loans and grants because it does depend on the size of the community, the, the, house, the median household income of the community, and I'll show you a little bit about that, that later. Uh, but what we do have to be able to show is there's an inability to repay those funds as a loan because we'll look at doing a loan first, and the grant funds come in as a supplement. Um, as I said, we have to meet median household income and population guidelines in order to access the grant funds. And, and really those grant funds are targeted to the smaller communities and the ones with limited revenue streams. Um, and really, I, I, I would argue that most communities under $20,000 are going to have, or 20,000 population are going to have limited revenue streams, and especially when it comes to, to funding their libraries. And so, as I said, we're, we're going to look to try to get, um, as much grant funds into these projects as we as we possibly can. Uh, here are those grant percentages. Um, we can go up to 75 or 75 percent um, of a project in grant if we can show that it's necessary in communities of less than 5,000 and that have a median household household income of, of just over 23. And those household incomes are really based on uh, a percentage of the, the national median household income. I believe that 23% is, I want to say it's 60% of the, the national, and then some of those others are at 70 and 80%. Uh, but as you can see, it's kind of a sliding scale based on community size and, and MHI. Um, if we have, as I mentioned earlier, 20,000 is the maximum as far as population goes for communities that we, that we can work with. Uh, but even those larger communities, we can do small, a small amount of grant if, if we have an MHI that, that falls below that 34,813 uh, that, that's shown there. Um, and, and as I've said a couple of times, we're, we're going to try to maximize the grants on these projects. And so uh, I would encourage you to, to uh, you know, give us a call and let us know what your project is, and we can kind of start playing with the numbers with you and kind of see where, where we might be. Now, I have a question about the census data. Is this, you right now, I mean, they just started the new census. So this, yeah, you can probably is, you can probably ignore that subject to change uh, with census data. <laughs> this, I actually pulled this particular slide from, from an older presentation, and um, we will be using, it's actually, this is all 2000 census data. Um, okay. Now, if you get on the census websites, you know, they've got updated numbers to 2006, 2007. Right. 
better yeah. estimates, but... Uh, so we know we've had issues with this, with things that we've been doing related to census data, and we know we know here in Nebraska there are certain communities that there have been big changes in, like, plants closing, sure. population changes big time, mm -hmm. or median household median um, income changes a lot since the last obvious census. Sure. But we know locally that this has happened. Everybody knows that actually happened in their town, so they could still, you know... Oh, definitely, and... Look and at really what... what, what what might have happened last year that changes these numbers completely. Exactly. And, and one of the things we can look at, if that's the case, if we've got a community where you think there's been a significant change in that, in that, that median household income is much lower than what it's showing in the 2000 census, is we can actually uh, have you do an income survey. Um, and we, we work a lot with the Community Development Block Grant Program uh, mm -hmm. that the state of Nebraska Department of Economic Development uh, administers. And especially, we, we, see, we do it quite a bit more, I think, when we're doing our water and wastewater projects. But what happens is with, with the block grant, they've got a, a threshold and a, a community has to be what they consider. I think it's 50 and a half, 51 percent, basically, of the community has to be, um, uh, what do they call it, low and moderate income, which is 80 percent of median household income or less. And what happens is we, we come up, we come across communities where that, that MHI or that low to moderate income percentage ends up being in the 40s. And people think, well, yeah, I, we think it's higher than that. Well, if that's the case, the community can, can work to complete an income survey. Get more and correct, it, yeah, more correct. Yeah, and if that, that income survey comes back and shows us that it's higher than that or that we've got a lower MHI than, than what we showed originally, then we can use those numbers instead. So hard doing these things right on the edge of a new census too. Yeah, like, well, but if we just had another year, we'd have the numbers. And the, yeah, and the problem with the census is it's it's more than a year before the numbers oh, yeah. come out. They'll they'll do it this year, but it's probably more like 2013, 14 before we actually mm -hmm. see any new numbers. Uh, we have uh, area offices around the state, and this map kind of shows you. Uh, you can take a look at where you are in the state, who you, who you may um, be working with uh, if you do have a project, and. Uh, I've got my contact information on the last slide, and so if, if you don't want to try to read these the very small print and jot down the numbers, you can contact me, and I can get you in touch with, with our area specialists and in, we in will your be area. Loading, as usual, we will be loading this PowerPoint presentation to the Library Commission SlideShare account, so you'll be able to download this whole presentation and see it um, on there as well. Um, it looks like we have someone with a question. Somebody raised their hand. Here's a question. Let's see, Janet. Okay. This is whoops. Janet, one of our people here. Is S A I T E data acceptable? I don't know what that is. You know, I'm not sure what that is either. As far as what is that income? Janet. <laughs> um I've unmuted you. I think you said you have a mic there. Or you can type it in. No, I didn't hear you. You must have your... I've unmuted you from my side. Or try again. I'm not hearing anything. Go ahead and type it in, can you? We had this problem before with a laptop with our other <laughs> location as well. Small area income and poverty estimates. Oh, you know, I, I don't know. We, 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 could, we would certainly be willing to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, if, it's, if it's something that's going to give us a more up-to-date number than what we think this, the census has, uh, we're certainly willing to look at it. Yeah, it sounds like they're pretty um, open to whatever you can throw at you. Can yeah, throw at you know, <laughs> what we'd like to do is, um, you know, we, we would like to, to, you know, maximize the funding available for communities. And so if, if we've got other ideas for, for how we might do that, we're certainly willing to, to listen to what those are and see if we can find a way to, again, maximize those grant funds for communities as well. 
Yeah, she says it comes from the census only, but it only is up to county level. Okay. But yeah, we've had that issue before that we're something we're dealing with, trying to work on right sure. now. We, we need to know down to city, but it only goes down sure. to county level. Well, in, in some cases, Something. we may be able to show that that particular library service area is the is countywide anyway. Exactly. Yeah, we just county and, libraries, and, yeah. and that and that's fine. And I, I would I would imagine a lot, uh, probably a lot of the the city libraries out there too. Probably the service area is much larger mm -hmm. than just the city itself. Oh, and so, yeah, we can certainly take a look at that and see if if uh, that would work. Okay. Great. Thank you. I think what we've got uh, next here is just some uh, examples of libraries that, that we have financed. I believe all of these have been done since 2000. Uh, I've got a, a list of them here, and Atkinson is the first one on here. And again, this is a, a brand new library in Atkinson. And, uh, those photos at the bottom are a little, little dark, but uh, what you've got is there's a couple of reading rooms in that library, and the, the lower left one, and, and maybe it shows up better on your screen, uh, there's a fireplace and some nice uh, comfy reading chairs, and then the, the one on the right is kind of a teen reading room, um, which I thought was a, was a great idea to, to have that available as well. Uh, this is the public library in Farnham. Um, kind of gives you, a, a, I think, a contrast in the size and scale of some of the libraries that we've worked with. This really, if, if, if you take a close look, is just kind of a modular building that, that was uh, used, but they were, they were able to put a, a new library in course provide all of the the access that that's required as well again another small one this is the library in Brady uh, it was a converted building um, I believe and as you see I believe those were the women who were involved in getting the financing and really getting the library up and running in, in Brady but again it's another just small community library um, and you know not all of these library projects have to be multi-million dollar projects uh, we're willing to, to look at uh, you know, even even the smallest libraries in, in some of our very small communities, uh, if, if you want to get a library in there. Each town just gets what they need. Exactly. Uh, this is, a, a, again, a brand new library in, in Wakefield, the Graves Public Library. And uh, the picture down below, I believe, was taken before it had opened and the shelves were still empty. <laughs> and I think that they, and before they had finished the landscaping outside as well on, on this particular one. Uh, in Humboldt, it's a, it's a renovated building downtown. Uh, that they did. They did some exterior work um, and, and did some work inside as well to, to get that building cleaned up and, and it's really a beautiful old building. Uh, this is a tribal college library in Little Priest uh, that, that we also help fund. Uh, we can do um, public libraries but that, that also would include um, college or school libraries that, that are open to the public beyond school hours. Uh, so if it's something that you're looking at funding in, in maybe conjunction with the school, um, it, that, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't there's know if there's... A lot of, a lot of um, towns are doing that for um, just space reasons or sure. money reasons. So school and public is now the same one. Yeah. I think uh, actually the city of Lincoln has done its first one with a, right. a school um, yeah. out in the, the air park area, yeah, Ar um, Arnold School. Arnold, yeah. Yeah, and so it's uh, the library is connected to the school, but it's open uh, beyond beyond school hours and open to the public as well. Which is, it's it's nice to have that that shared use because really then you know that you don't have these buildings in town that just go dark after after mm -hmm. four o'clock. Uh, this is the new library in Tecumseh and the sign they've got out front. Wahoo. Um, this is, I think, the most recent one that, we, that we've done. And I want to say this was probably 2006 or so that, that Wahoo was completed in. Um, actually, I've, I've been with USDA for, for just a couple of years now. And so some of these other libraries I was able to pull photos up, but I haven't been to any of them. Wahoo is, is one that I have been into. And it, it really is. It's a, it's a beautiful library. They did, they did a great job on, on the library in Wahoo. And again, this was a, a brand new library. Um, and this one and a couple of the others that you saw on the slides uh, were done using the Library Foundation as an applicant. Um, and so what they've done is they are our applicant. Uh, they've borrowed the funds from USDA or making the payments. Um, they've got some sort of lease arrangement with the, with the city. So the, the city basically pays them a, a, 
annual lease payment that's equal to the loan payments or maybe a little bit more to cover you know their small expenses that they might have as the library foundation uh, that's then passed on as as a loan repayment and and so here's an example of, of libraries who uh, have have worked the process that way and it does seem to be I think probably the easiest way for for a lot of libraries to get these projects done And again, I just wanted to reiterate that these, I feel like I'm doing a, a cable TV com commercial or something, but the funds, you know, you act now, the you know, funds are limited, uh, and, but, but really, truly, they are. Um, these are funds that are available through the American Reinvestment Recovery Act. Uh, they will run out at the end of this fiscal year. Um, now, that doesn't mean we have to have a project completed by the end of the fiscal year. That means we need to have an application in that we've approved and what we call obligated, which means that we've got those funds set aside for that particular project. And so we need to have that done really by, by the end of September. And so, uh, you know, if you've got uh, project ideas, big or small, if, if you just need a couple of com computers, for instance, um, you know, that's something we're, we're going to look at as well. Uh, so even those small equipment types of projects, if, if you got something that you need, um, please contact us and we'll see if we can, we can help you get that finance, get that project done. Um, if you've been considering a construction project of some sort for, for a while, um, now is probably the time to, to really move forward with that. Uh, even, even if you don't think you have all of your financing lined up. Again, as I said, we can kind of be that stopgap financing, and, and you can continue to uh, raise funds and, and then pay us back early if you need to. But what this does is it's going to give you access to that money now while it's there, uh, because if you wait a year or two years, um, chances are the, the funds that are available will be, will be limited, and, and particularly the grant side of things. Um, uh, because we, we do have this push to really put a lot of grant funds into into these projects right now. And so if you wait two years and come in, we might be able to help you, but chances are you're going to end up paying a lot more for it in, in the long run to, to get it done. Um, and so we'd like to, to help you get it done, at least get it started now, and, and uh, we'll work with you to, uh, to get that completed. That's really all I have as far as uh, slide presentations. My contact information is there, so feel free to send me an email or, or give me a call if you, if you have questions that you think of after we're done here today. Um, more than happy to answer those for you or get you in contact with uh, one of the specialists in, in your area who can help you start working on uh, an application. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, anybody have any questions? Um, if you have a question, you can go ahead and type it into the questions area, or um, if you have a microphone, I'm working on getting everybody unmuted. So um, if you do have a mic, go ahead and um, ask your question. Hold on. A lot of people on this. left one person muted. <laughs> So anybody have any questions? And if you have any particular project ideas um, that you've been talking about in your library, if, if you want, if you've got some specific questions about about your potential project, um, I'd be more than happy to talk with you about them now as well. Uh, someone here did say, okay, um, Wanda asked, how do you know what your, your MHI would be? That would be, as you said, the census. Yeah, actually, the, there's a website. Um, it's, I, can't, I couldn't tell you exactly what the, the address is, but it's, it's part of the census website. It's called American Fact Finder. Mm -hmm. And if, I think if you probably just Google American Fact Finder, it'll take you there. You can type in your community name, your state, and it'll give you a, a basically a whole sheet of all the demographics on your community. It'll give you, you know, populations and re breakdowns by race and gender. Uh, but there's a whole section on um, income levels, and it'll tell you exactly what your median household income is, and then it'll also show you what the national is, I think, in a, in a column next to it. Uh, one of the things that you want to watch when you pull that up, I think a lot of times um, at the top there'll be a tab, and it'll it'll first pull up, I think, a, 
updated 2006-2007 estimate. And then there's a tab if you click on Census 2000, it'll it'll take you to that. And it might not do that for everybody, but it seems like whenever I pull it up, I get that that 2006-7 tab first. Yeah, more update. Oh, yeah. um, ah, Janet wants to know: Are you willing to come by, or maybe anybody at your yeah, oh, definitely. Whether it's whether it's me or uh, our specialist that's uh, in an office that's closer to you, we we definitely would be more than willing to have somebody come out and talk talk with uh, staff. Or if you've got a, a library board meeting, for instance, and, and you want to get some more information, we can certainly get somebody out to those meetings. Um, just let us know when and where, and, and we will uh, we'll try to get someone out there. Um, also, I have a note here just as a reminder: if you are also looking for census info and having issues or you know, want to help with uh, um, accessing it or interpreting it <laughs> yourself. Um, here at the Library Commission, Beth Goebel is our government, one of our government documents people, and she can help you with that as well. So you can call the Library Commission for assistance on getting your data or just understanding um, what it says. Um, um, one last question we have is, do you have a timeline yeah, on I'm, steps to yeah, get you started? Like what would be like, you know, step one, how you do these things? The uh, actually the first step I, I would say is is if um, you know you, you got your project idea whatever it is uh, the first step would be to, to contact our office whether you, you give me a call in the state office or one or our specialist in your area um, and and talk with us about what your project is and we can kind of walk you through um, the next steps in the application process we've got of course we're the government we've got lots of forms uh, but we've got we've got some forms that we'll we'll have you fill out. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Tell us a little bit more about the project. In some cases, if it's a, especially if it's a, a new library or an addition, um, we look at uh, kind of a, a feasibility study that, that would have been done. And in a lot of cases, if you've worked with an architect, that 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 will have been done, or we can take pieces of what they've done and, and get a feasibility uh, muted. Okay. <laughs> I think it may have finished what I was saying. Um, can you have more than one project this year? Can you, you apply you, for more than one? You, yeah, you, technically you can. Um, I would say if you've got ideas for more than one project but they're at the same location, I would suggest kind of trying to wrap them into one application. Uh, but if, if you're a and I don't know if this is the case with any of these communities, but if you've got maybe multiple sites or something that, that you're looking at, um, we can we can look at that as multiple applications. Uh, but we can we can look at multiple sites with one application um, as well. So uh, it's probably easiest to put everything in as one application. But if for some reason you, you just can't do that, we can, we can look at more than one application from an applicant in any given year. Um, is there a specific web address for the? USDA website or um, the... yeah there there uh, there is I'm trying to think the easiest way to get to the the application materials what I would suggest is is talking with somebody on staff and they can get the information to you uh, rather than, than going out because you can find that the application is kind of a, a two-page thing and it, it just kind of lists how much are you asking for and a few is other it, minor... is it available online or it, it is just... available oh, okay. online yeah, if you go to uh, the USDA the Rural Development and the USDA.gov, your main yeah, that'll take you to yeah, that'll take you so. to the the state's website, and and which will give you a link to the national website as well. So. Okay, so you could use the end bit of his um, email address here, ne.usda.gov, to get you started um, for searching around, or like you said, give a phone call to him and just they can send it to you. <laughs> I think we already answered this question if these projects need to be shovel ready and no. Uh, they they don't I, I kind of there's kind of a continuum there. I think by by the uh, end of September we want to be getting close to shovel ready. Uh, we we want to have uh, you know if it's if it's a new library project for instance, we we would need to have um, have those plans available uh, by then. You don't have to necessarily be ready to to break ground at that time, but we would at least need to have a a design done 
and some cost figures in place so we could we could determine how much you know it's funding. actually gonna happen yeah well and, and so we know how much we're looking at as far as mm -hmm. funding goes um it's it's tough to make a uh, a promise to fund something when we're when we're just talking um you know general numbers we, we need to be able to get a little bit more specific now that doesn't mean once we um get to that point and and we we obligate some funds for a project and when something happens and and costs go over that doesn't mean we can't make some changes then at that point and provide some additional funding but we need to be to that to that point where we we have a pretty good idea of what we're talking about as far as the size of the project Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a long one. Um, someone was told by Joan Casper from Norfolk that our community does not qualify because of MHI. However, because so many students qualify for just free lunches, I find it hard to see how we could have a disqualified MHI. So mm -hmm. how does... Uh, well, that's something. Jolene is in our, our Norfolk office. She's our community program specialist there. And it, it may be that census, uh, that census information for your community shows the MHI. And it may be that, that you... It's not that you don't qualify for the funding, but you may not qualify for uh, grant funding. Uh, but again, we can take a look at, at that and see if there's some other you know, pieces of information that we can find that, that demonstrates that that MHI really isn't accurate. And, and so we can, we can talk with you a little bit more about that. Uh, but it's, I guess, I, I don't know what the community is, and, and I don't know what their MHI is, so it's, it's hard to say for, to for certain. Yeah, it really is a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. Um, does there have to be an well, accredited library established first? I guess you guys are concerned no, about there wouldn't. accreditation or not. We, no. we do that here at the commission, whether libraries are accredited or not. Sometimes sure. It depends on what funding we give them. Um, as a, as just what we do. Sure. Um, no, it, it wouldn't have to be an accredited library. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to see a new library started somewhere mm -hmm. where there wasn't a library before. Um, I that may be a little tougher to get done in, in the timeline that's required, but that's you know we'd be more than happy to work with you on that. And, and I guess I, I have no idea what's involved with accreditation or how long of a process that is, but. I don't uh, think it's yeah, really going to matter to us yeah. if a library is accredited as long as it's available to the public for use. That's really the important thing to us. Yeah. Um, there may be communities out there that are have been thinking for a while about we need a library or we're kind of doing it sort of out of somebody's house or sure. somebody's storefront and we really, you know, never had the, nothing pushed us enough to be able to do our own building, but oh, now we just discovered this thing. Sure. So they're even though yeah. they're... Oh, that, that absolutely. That We'd love to see yeah. love to see a project like that come through if if, if uh, there's a community that's kind of at that that tipping point where they're they're mm -hmm. ready to, to move forward and have yeah. a, a standalone library, and and I guess what I, the other thing I should mention is it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a standalone library if if there is a, another public building, um, and the library is a portion of that building. Mm -hmm. For instance, if if you've got a, a city hall that's got a Small li I don't know if there are any communities that, that are that work it that way mm -hmm. that have so a small library shares, and like with the post office sure with the fire and and those whatever. those we can look at as well they they don't have to be a, a standalone building so we could certainly look at that um, in, well, like yeah. you're saying the public school ones yeah, yeah exactly okay um, any further questions it looks like we've I've got through all the ones that were on here. Um, we have a few more minutes. If anybody has any other questions, um, we remuted people. It didn't like look like a lot of people were using the microphones, and it was causing, from what I've been told, a little bit of static and feedback and whatnot when I unmute to everyone. <laughs> so, um, anything else? All right. If you don't have anything right now, that's fine. You've got uh, Troy's contact info there. You can email or call him, of course, with any follow-up questions you may have. Um, as I said, this um, the PowerPoint that we just went through here will be posted up on the Commission SlideShare account, um, so you'll have access to that. Oh, did you want to look at that PDF? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Too. Um, let's see. And we'll, I guess, put that out there as well. They can yeah. access it. Um, this is just a, a one-page... Um, kind of fact sheet on the the library initiative that's that's available that, that we talked about and has just kind of a few bullet points about what what you can do with the funds who's eligible 
And this is something that uh, if you've got, you know, library board members or others that, that weren't able to listen, if, if you, you'll be able to access this and, and print off a couple copies and, and share that with others or, or even, you know, email it on to other folks. Uh, but again, the, the area office contact information is down there in the corner as well. Uh, <clears throat> depending on where you're located, you can, you can contact our, our specialists in those areas who, who can work with you as well. And we'll be putting this PDF up on the, um, when we put the recording out as well, so you'll be able to download it from the Commission website and use it as you want to to promote this to people. <laughs> Convince them. Many thanks. I'm going to thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you all very much all right, for uh, letting us come and talk to you about the program. I, I hope that you've got some project ideas in mind, or at least we've kind of got the wheels turning maybe and mm -hmm. some heads out there as... Uh, what, what you might like to see happen, and uh, please give us a call and, or send us an email or get in contact with us some way, and we'll uh, try to work with you to see if we can help you get your project completed. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, I think that'll wrap it up for today then. Um, just got some things coming through. Um, like I said, contact uh, Troy for any other questions you may have. Um, the recording of this will be put up on our website. Probably by tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> uh, I hope you'll join us next week. Our uh, next week's Encompass Live will be uh, the year in review. Encompass Live is actually a year old now, um, a little over a year now that we're into February. And um, I'm going to be doing a session just um, highlighting some of the last year's um, interesting topics that we had and maybe some updates on some of them. Things have uh, changed since we actually did our live session. So I hope you'll join us for that next Wednesday. Um, on that, thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.